Faculty of Economics. Faculty of Law. Faculty of Engineering. Faculty of Medicine. Faculty of Agriculture. Faculty of Teacher Training and Education. Faculty of Social and Political Sciences Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences Faculty of Computer Sciences of public health graduate school and PhD program The international cooperation of Sriwijaya University covers the countries of Thailand, Malaysia, Japan, Vietnam, Germany, America, Italy, Poland, Philippines, Taiwan, Turkey, and China. Learning at Sriwijaya University is controlled through a mechanism to ensure continuity of qualified universities with the sporting facilities that are presentative libraries, mosques, clinics, student centers, student apartments, cafeterias, auditoriums, and sports facilities. Jaya University is now working towards a world-class university. Faculty of Engineering Sriwijaya University is delighted to take you now for the opening ceremony of Sriwijaya International Conference on Engineering and Technology, Sijato 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please welcome the master of ceremony for today, Miss Tia. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Tia Melinda, and welcome to the second day of Sriwijaya International Conference on Engineering and Technology 2021. Thank you to the participants who are willing to come back on the second day of this conference and welcome to the participants who just attended this conference on the second day. We really appreciate your presence for taking the time to attend this event. As an information, for paper publications, all selected and presented papers will be published in American Institute Publishing Proceeding. Without any further ado, now we invited the Dean of Faculty of Engineering Universitas Sriwijaya, Professor Johnny Arliansha for the opening speech. Please kindly come to the stage, Professor Johnny. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Distinguished professor, participant, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second day of the Sriwijaya International Conference on Engineering and Technology 2020, Sicheto 2020. Whether you just uh, join today, or already had a good day with us yesterday. We want to welcome you warmly and hope you enjoy the second day of this conference. The Faculty of Engineering in South Sri is proud that we would we held an international conference in a grand scale this year. This biennial today's conference emphasized the importance of establishing connection among nations an international frontliner, thinker, academic, executive, government, and business official, and also practitioner and leader from all over the world to share the knowledge and best practice uh, as a part of the global network. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of uh, our university, Sriwijaya University, is taken from the name of Sriwijaya Kingdom that uh, progressed between the 7th until 13th century. Like in what is now called Indonesia, the kingdom originated in Palembang and soon extend its influence and control. international sea trade and uh, established trade relation with uh, state in Malayu archipelago until China and India. However, by the end of the 20, uh, at the end of 12th century, Sijaya have been reduced uh, to a small kingdom and uh, Malayu have taken a dominant role in Sumatra. The Japanese kingdom like uh, Majapahit soon come to dominate the Indonesian political skin. And I want to tell you about the Palembang city. Palembang city is the capital city of South Sumatra. Currently, this city uh, is the oldest city in Indonesia, date back to the 7th century. Palembang was incorporated into Dutch East Indies in 1820, after abolition of the Palembang Sultanate, and Palembang was cut to a city in the 1st April 1901. And uh, Palembang today is a second large city in Sumatra. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we are gathering in Palembang, both offline and online, during the COVID-19. Uh, where right now uh, 
COVID-19 is still hitting. During this pandemic, let always take, of course, ourselves by the following the health procedure that have been set avoid to avoid the uh, corona virus. This is uh, event is uh, organized by Faculty of Engineering, University of Srijaya, and we are committed to maintain this traditional carry carrying in uh, every two years. We believe that after two years, we will produce many research results that need to share with our colleagues and in other institutions. I'm hopeful that uh, this intellectual discussion will lead to future collaboration between university, between research institute and industry, both local and internationally. It is emphasized that topic concerning innovation for better of human life and the environmental will receive special attention. Let's make this conference a national media for exchanging knowledge, experiment, research, and the review of progress of the, and discussion on state of the art of the future trend of, of the pros, prospective collaboration and networking in both field eco-based technology development. At the end, the deepest appreciation to our sponsor, the supported and supported party that uh, has have given us a very various contribution uh, that never ending to support this conference. I would like also to convey my gratitude to all our distinguished speaker for making the time to share the knowledge with us uh, during this uh, conference. To our fellow researcher and practitioner from Indonesia and overseas, welcome and enjoy your stay in Palembang. I would like also to invite all participants in experiencing our appreciation to all members of Sichito 2020 Organizing Committee for their hard work in making this conference successfully. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Johnny. Now you may kindly go back to your seats. As we know, this conference has three plenary sessions, and two previous sessions, the speakers were Professor Dato Hasan Basri, Professor Stio Bismo, and Mr. Henke. For today's plenary sessions, the speakers are Professor Kuatriana, Mr. Amrifan Saladin, and Mr. Halid. But we truly sorry to inform you that Mr. Halid, one of our speakers can't attend this conference because of an accident. This plenary session will last for two hours. It will be led by our moderator, Mrs. Baslina, a lecturer of Chemical Engineering, Universitas Sriwijaya. For further information about involved in the presentations, about asking questions will be shared by the moderator. Please welcome to the stage, Mrs. Baslina. Thank you very much, M, um, Master of Ceremony, for passing the session to me. Hello, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to the plenary session day two, Siceto 2021. I'm Baslina Domi Afra, as a moderator of the season, speaking from the boardroom of Zuri Hotel Palembang. It's being honored for me to guide the course of today's discussion. 
has presented today in the boardroom of Zuri Hotel our amazing keynote speaker, Mr. Amripan Salahuddin Mohani, PhD. Hello, Mr. Amripan. Thank you very much for coming with us. And also, we connect with the other another speaker uh, through the Zoom meeting, Prof. Kuatriana MSG. Is already there? Yes, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, mister. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for attending the Siceto, Prof. Uh, actually, as Master of Cere uh, as a Master Ceremony mentioned before, we have another amazing speaker, Mr. Halid. Unfortunately, he can join because he got an accident a few days ago. Uh, for the next, I'd like to say hi to all participants that have been joined in the ballroom or uh, in the Zoom meeting room. <laughs> So please give me our full attention because in a minute we are going to have a beneficial talk to discuss with our keynote speaker. Please make yourself comfortable and enjoy your seat while you may stay home or connect to from your office. Ladies and gentlemen, for our first agenda, we will invite Prof. Dr. Quatriana MSG. While Prof. Kuat preparing his presentation slide, allow me to introduce him first. Prof. Kuat is a Dean of Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science, Universitas Gajah Mada. He finished his last study in the Doctor Engineering, Department of Applied Science and Material in Kyushu University, Japan in 2004. His main research interests are meteorology, material science, sensor and sensor system for taste and other detection. He is well known as an instrumentation, material, nanoparticle, sensor, and etc. It is proven by approximately eight patents and more than 47 papers that he has been published about the related subject. Currently, he is leading in search about development of electronic news for fast and non-invasive diagnosis of SARS-CoV-19 based on volatile organic components on bread in 2020, 2020 and 2021. As we know, the COVID-19 pandemic has become one of the problem in various parts of the world, including Indonesia. In order to prevent the spread of the COVID-19, of course, we must detect the presence of the virus of the human body so that we can provide the appropriate treatment. Prof. Kuat and his team has been developed COVID-19 detection tool to humans with breed called genus COVID-19. The genus COVID-19 is able to identify the coronavirus for detecting volatile organic compounds VOC. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it is going to very interesting thing in this class. Before we invited Prof. Kuat to deliver his presenting, uh, I'd like to inform you, Prof. Kuat, the time for a lot the, to deliver the presentation is about 30 minutes. I will kindly remind you when it's about 10 minutes remaining. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, please welcome Prof. Kuat Triana MSG. The spotlight is your prop. Thank you very much, uh, the moderators. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank to the organizing committee uh, in the, this very nice conference. And this is the, the Sri Chai International Conference on Engineering and Technology 2021. And this is a very nice uh, occasion that I would like to present some of my research, but uh, as requested by the organizing committee, 
uh, I should uh, present about the genus C19. So let me show the uh, my presentations first. I think you can see my presentation. Yes, it's already there. We can see it yeah. clearly. Uh, that's why uh, the title of my presentation is about the profiling test of electronic nose for snipping out uh, COVID-19 based on exhaled breath brain recognition. Uh, basically, this is uh, the early stage of our COVID-19 uh, detection system uh, based on electronic nose. As you know, that electronic nose is consists of uh, uh, sensor array and then uh, pattern recognition based on artificial intelligence and so on. But uh, today, I just want to show how to uh, test, how to know about the performance of this uh, kind of electronic nose, especially the uh, brand of the COVID-19 uh, detection means that uh, genus C19. Uh, I would like to start with, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, this so is a uh, process is unique volatile chemical print. I think that it is a lot of uh, paper presented in uh, two years ago and uh, until now. Then we need analytical instrument uh, as we know that uh, for, for analysis the uh, print prints of the chemical of print print. Usually people uh, use the uh, uh, standard. Analytic instrument like gas chromatography, uh, uh, tandem with mass spectroscopy, and also another uh, techniques like uh, time of flight detection and so on. But it is uh, kinds of this instrument cannot be used uh, in daily life because uh, in practical application, this is very uh, not only very expensive but also very uh, complicated in uh, preparation also for uh, interpretation. So we need analytic instrument that can mimic the SNP uh, and diagnosis uh, ability. It is very important. That's why we can do screen bread sample to classify and diagnose uh, several type of the disease. This is in, in general of the possibility to analyze the uh, human bread from human bread that we can decide uh, what kind of the disease of these humans. Uh, I think a lot of uh, paper has been already published that uh, related to the uh, VOC biomarkers, uh, volatile organic compound biomarkers from exhaled breath. Uh, for example, the exhaled breath analysis is useful during response to treatment in a, sorry, I, I want to give you Lesser pointer, this one. Yeah, to respond to the treatment and advanced lung cancer. This is a very uh, dedicated uh, uh, techniques how to detect the lung cancer just by using the uh, breath analysis using, yeah, maybe another uh, instrument analysis. And another type of uh, reports also uh, the similar techniques also from the breath analysis. So, I mean that the breath analysis is also is one of the simples and the possible high uh, accuracy of detection of uh, any disease. And still in the uh, breath analysis, that we can collect for us in the tenacle serpent tube, for example, then we can uh, then much the substance put using the gas chromatography uh, tandem with mass spectroscopy like this, then you can uh, find uh, a lot of uh, compound and that is a very uh, detailed in, uh, compound detection. But you can also uh, analyze using the uh, sensor array based on electronic noise, for example, like this. But in this case, uh, uh, the sensor is different from us. Uh, here, the detection of uh, uh, breath analysis is not uh, based on the compound, but it is uh, related to the pattern of some uh, disease. I mean that the disease can be uh, represented by 
a specific or uh, a unique uh, pattern that we can analyze later by using uh, uh, artificial intelligence. This one is also possible. Another report also possible to determine not only uh, lung cancer, but also uh, about the another disease like this one. Uh, a lot of disease can be uh, analyzed by using uh, based on uh, breath analysis. But people sometimes use the classical analytical techniques like uh, gas chromatography. But uh, recently, people use gas, gas sensor arrays uh, based on electronic nodes like this one. Oh, uh, of course, uh, advantages are just advantages of put uh, techniques are uh, also possible. For example, when using the analytical techniques of gas chromatography, you will have a uh, very detail of uh, to find the uh, compound, but uh, using the, the electronic system, you cannot uh, find the compound. But uh, when you use the chromatography, uh, for example, it will take a long time to uh, uh, test uh, in a massive population, but uh, using the uh, sensor arrays with uh, electronic nodes, you will have a very short time to uh, have a reset and also high reproducibility. Of course, the low cost is also uh, uh, very important to, to uh, mention uh, to, uh, for using the uh, electronic notion. So here, actually, <clears throat> based on uh, uh, breath analysis, we can uh, do, we can detect many uh, type of. Uh, uh, this is uh, of the humans. And uh, what is the electronic nose exercise? The electronic nose is when we compare uh, between electronic nose and human olfactory, it will be similar. And this, this above is about electronic nose. Uh, this is a gas sensor array related to the olfactory receptors. This is a signal transducer related to the olfactory pulp and so on. And pattern recognition algorithm uh, with uh, machine learning or Artificial intelligence in general is uh, related to the, our brain, and discrimination and classification is also related to uh, discrimination and classification of uh, our brains. That's why the sensing, interpreting, discriminating process of an electronic nose is a mimic of human olfaction. This is a basic principle of the electronic nose, actually. So, using electronic nose, you uh, will have a very fast uh, result. And in the case of uh, Genus G19, it is about two minutes. Uh, start from the detection <coughs> of your uh, you, of your breath to the machine, and uh, during the two minutes, it will be possible to have the results. Uh, you will be a negative or positive uh, COVID-19. And <clears throat> this is a, a main part of electronic noise in general, for example. Uh, we can imagine that this is the sample of our uh, uh, bread uh, collected in the plastic uh, collecting pack. Then you use the pump or micro pump to uh, blow the uh, sample to the reaction chamber. And the reaction chamber means uh, the sensor chambers that uh, all our, the fiber can be detected by sensor arrays. After that, uh, the this, this sensor array will result in a sensor response, and uh, then you make an amplifier or uh, another uh, conditioning, uh, signal conditioning. So we have, uh, uh, it means with that acquisition of device. And not stop here, but you can continue with the data processing, including the feature extraction, and also for then for pattern recognition. Here, pattern uh, data processing, including pattern, rec uh, sorry, data processing, uh, including the uh, feature extraction is very, very uh, important in this case. So it is uh, tricky to how to find actually the pattern of uh, the feature of this uh, pattern. It is very important. Okay, uh, let uh, us, uh, I discuss about the typical of the pattern, like, like this one, for example. 
that is the indication. This, this is just an example I found in another website. That is an, uh, just an example of this is a, this is the pattern of the patient, for example. Oh, this one is a this is patient of the from the uh, uh, health from the exhaled breath, for example. This is uh, very easy to understand, but uh, in in, uh, in practical, it, it is not easy to differentiate like this one. So I want to show you later uh, in this uh, presentation. I mean, the pattern recognition system is required. Uh, we usually uh, use the artificial learning like uh, machine learning or deep learning uh, uh, models. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Some people ask me, uh, why uh, your Chino uh, C19 is very fast uh, in uh, development during uh, COVID-19? No, it is start from the 2008. We developed the first uh, electronic plus like this one. It's a very simple system. Then continue with uh, uh, another uh, type of electronic news that uh, start from here. We call the genus. Yeah, from the, this one we, we call it the genus. But before uh, 2013, we still uh, called the inus. So in 2018, uh, we apply the electronic mass or genus to be a detection of uh, sepsis infection in neonatus, but then uh, continue with uh, tuberculosis detection uh, through the mode piece like this one, and then continue in 2020, uh, pandemic of COVID-19 come to Indonesia, and then we modified inside of the machine and also the uh, artificial intelligence also the, to be uh, built in this uh, case. So, uh, okay, I want to focus on uh, electronic guns, especially for uh, what you call Juno uh, C19. That's from uh, our breath. Uh, actually, the bacteria or virus in the lung, uh, this, the virus, especially uh, COVID 19 uh, virus. In, uh, 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 come to uh, our lungs, and then it will reset the volatile organic compound uh, in the, our lungs. And if you breath from, uh, you can collect your breath in the sample pack and then uh, insert it to the sensor array uh, system. So the sensor, uh, the sensor will respond like this one to make a specific pattern for uh, the sensor array. So. It will be consistent, uh, actually, but uh, in the practical application, the consistency is still uh, disturbed by another noise from come from many other, including uh, environments and also from the condition of uh, surrounds the machine that operated this one. After collected uh, for many. Uh, data from many patients, then, oh yeah, uh, the positive or negative of the uh, uh, COVID-19 is uh, verified using the uh, RT-PCR, you know, that it is the, the, the most, uh, the gold standard for detection of COVID-19 right now. But in this case, we, we also use this, this uh, RT-PCR to make a decision whether the Passion is positive or negative. Okay, after collecting how many uh, samples, then we have uh, a, a training data set. We usually uh, split the training data set and testing data set uh, to be uh, randomly. And then uh, we uh, use the training data set to be evaluating the model performance. Uh, for example, in the case of our uh, electronics, Gino uh, C19, we used uh, uh, many types of uh, models of machine learning, uh, like uh, decision tree, and then neural network, and support vector machine, random forest, and so on. So uh, later on, I want, to, I want to show you the, the performance of this system. The, uh, this is for internal validation. We use the 70% that is randomly and testing for 30% that uh, data set randomly. Uh, what is accuracy? So 
uh, this is the, our uh, question in this uh, research. Uh, here, uh, not only about the, sorry, this is in a TP, but uh, I mean, this is a C19. Uh, genus for C19 is also uh, similar to the genus of the, for TP, tuberculosis. Uh, before continuing with the uh, application and the uh, other people, but we should uh, remain that the central response should be stable, uh, consistent for the same sample, and also safety in electrical and flow rates because we use a micro pump here. And also about the consumables also contribute in the uh, volatile organic compound. So it will be complicated if you use uh, Tino C19, but you use the, the plastic uh, sampling pack in the market, so it will be, will be uh, not suitable in this case. And then uh, true positive and negative confirmed by standard analysis of uh, RT-PCR and then interpret effects from other diseases is also possible in this case. And in the case of uh, artificial intelligence, we use uh, uh, a lot of uh, models, but um, later on we stood uh, picks on the best one uh, based on the accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, and so on. So uh, this is a typical of the uh, sensor. Here, in the case of uh, Chino C19, we use the metal oxide uh, semiconductor viscous sensor. Uh, here, at, uh, for many people that know about uh, this type of the sensor, the first one, if you in a clean air, the toner and electron and thin oxide attracted toward the oxygen with its absorbed on the surface of the sensing material, preventing the electric uh, current flow. So it is a very uh, important case. That's why the environment is very important when you operated uh, the TNC-19. Some people some, uh, uh, ignore about this condition of, of the uh, environment when using the TNC-19, but uh, I want to stress again that the environment is very important to uh, result to result in uh, uh, high accuracy of the system. And then uh, in the presence of reducing gas in the, surf in the surface of density of the absorbed gas, this one, uh, as a react with the reducing gases. So by reducing the gases, the electron and then release into the thin oxide uh, surface, allowing the current flow freely through the center. It means when you, uh, this is the uh, detail of the chemistry the gas sensor. I mean, that if, if you uh, give new uh, component, uh, organic volatile compound, for example, in the surface of the gas sensor, then the electron will be flow freely, and and that and this uh, point of view of the electronical, uh, it means that the resistance will be lower compared to the condition in the air fresh uh, uh, environment. So it will be uh, very easy to understand. Okay, uh, uh, I want to continue with the detail of our study about the Excel breath collection procedure performed in the profiling test. Yeah, uh, before uh, having uh, yeah, people, uh, a lot of production of genus 19 we should uh, uh, perform three uh, conditions through three testing. The first testing is the uh, profiling test. And then the, uh, the second one is uh, performance test, including the safety and the stability. And the third one is the diagnostic test. And the, in my presentation, we just talked about the profiling test. At this time, we collect the data from two uh, uh, hospitals in Yogyakarta, and we collect uh, about uh, 300, 333 uh, positive uh, with confirmed positive sample, and the remain of the 282. Uh, negative sample. And then we uh, to uh, uh, 
set up analysis uh, using uh, four different machine learning algorithms in this case of our study. This is a discriminant analysis, uh, support vector machine, multi-layer perceptron, and deep neural networks. So after that, we want to uh, make a comparison which one is the best and which one the worst. And we would like to use the next step to be the best one of the machine learning. And this is the condition of, of the uh, integrated Venus C19 system and its components. As you know, that this is a sampling pack, uh, the cap and connected to the uh, connector that we have also developed in our labs. And then this is the inside of this machine. As you know, that uh, we apply the uh, a filter like this one uh, and uh, for the bigger view is uh, also clear that this is the, the standard of the uh, uh, fiber in, in, in the uh, filter. Yeah. So uh, how to uh, prove that fires cannot uh, as, as, as safety in the using of electronics and this genus 19 uh, we trap the virus inside the uh, filter and we uh, did a swap uh, on the filter and uh, detect by using the PCR and they'll be positive. This one is, can be positive after uh, detecting, uh, detecting of the positive uh, patients of uh, COVID-19. So this is inside of this, uh, uh, Tino C19, and this is the typical uh, sensor response of the uh, uh, Tino C19. For example, this is not not all the the restaurants like that, but this is in an example. Uh, this is for negative ones, the negative one. Uh, from ten uh, sensor, the response, uh, the pattern of the res sensor response will be different from from the negative, uh, positive one. This is negative, and the right one is the positive. But uh, manual, it, it's not easy to understand or to uh, predict, but uh, uh, you can hear, so here that, oh, this is one, this one is a center number, what number is this one? And then the uh, sequential of its uh, response of the center can be, uh, consistent between negative and positive. But actually, we can uh, uh, make a data prediction like this one. If we uh, extract the feature by the maximum value. The maximum value means uh, this is the maximum value, this one. This maximum, maximum, maximum. This one is maximum value. If you just under the maximum value uh, between positive and negative, it's not clear. It's not clear. Uh, I mean, it's not always overlapping, but combination between four uh, feature extraction combined to represent each sensor, it will be uh, better. Uh, so here we have a reset of uh, our detection uh, during the uh, profiling test. Is uh, this is a specificity uh, sensitivity is around. Uh, uh, 95 uh, percent, and then the specificity is also 95 percent, and area under curve of the ROC curve is also high. That's why we then apply for the next testing of uh, performance testing in uh, PPFK, and uh, this is a Minister of Health in Surabaya. Uh, this is the result uh, of our. Uh, uh, test during the profiling test. And about the negative and positive, you can hear that some uh, pattern of the positive and negative uh, can be overlap. Uh, this one is the overlap ones. Uh, it should be negative, but some part can uh, is indicated uh, positive uh, by, by uh, our machine. And also this one should be uh, positive, but it is the area of the negative one. So this one is uh, uh, it's not easy to understand directly. So uh, here in the next graph, we uh, show you the performance of, of four 
uh, model of machine learning. Uh, so we just hear that the and the highest one is uh, about the uh, oh, sorry. This one is uh, this is testing. This is one is testing trainings. I, I don't know why. Oh, this one sensitive uh, using uh, ten fold cross validation testing and all the data of four different machine learning algorithm. That's why uh, uh, this is this is just uh, next and uh, a summary. This this is summary of uh, our results as represented by the graph, but. Uh, 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 Mr. Brett and I using machine learning, you can also represent it by using the uh, receiver operating characteristic like this one. So, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, LTA will show about the uh, 90 more than 97 percent and MLP uh, almost 100 percent and so on. But this one is uh, the, the left one side is the for. Well, uh, training one, this uh, the right down side is uh, for testing sample. So the different characteristic. This this is lower uh, uh, characteristic because yeah because the the sample uh, uh, did not uh, use for uh, training. So this is a, actually the external data, and this is the internal data. Uh, when you when uh, the data were used for training uh, step, and this is the illustration of working in our laboratory with uh, some uh, undergraduate student here. And this is under, uh, undergraduate student in our lab and during uh, COVID nineteen uh, uh, pandemic, and we uh, worked in a lab, and this one is a. Uh, production of uh, uh, genus 19 in a factory. And this one is also uh, illustration of the uh, production, mass production of the genus 19. This is our team, uh, young, and also we also developed another application of electronic nose, uh, not genus, but NST for detection of uh, canoderma infection on the uh, palm oil uh, plantation. Uh, and also we are now develop another uh, uh, products of uh, electronic eyes with this uh, uh, like microscope without uh, lens, but connected to the artificial intelligence. So you can use this uh, next uh, product to be identify to identify the sample uh, directly with uh, 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 helping using the artificial intelligence. And this is another product, but I just want to show you about the, uh, sorry, no. Oh no, there's no, this one uh, from the lab to pattern center. I mean that uh, after completing our research in laboratory, then we change the process into uh, into uh, uh, startup company that this will be help to develop another uh, products. I think this is all my presentation. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Yeah. So the presentation about the development and production of genus C19 uh, is able to identify the coronavirus by the det detecting volatile organic compounds. For all the audience, I believe that some of you want to drop the question, comments, or having discussion with Prof. Kuat, but please save it for a while or write in the chat room uh, Zoom and I will read for uh, for the speaker later in the discussion in the discussion session. Or for those who want to directly uh, take the question, deliver comment. Question from another keynote speaker. 
the Q&A session will be held after the all speaker deliver their presentation. For now, we moving to the next agenda. We would like to invite Mr. Amri Pansalahidin Mohruni, PhD, to the stage. Oh, from there. No, moment. Oh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I would thanks that uh, give the opportunity to me for the as keynote speaker in Sriwijaya International Conference on Engineering and Technology. But today, this opportunity I will deliver to our youngest member in oh. uh, to uh, that create this paper. Uh, his name is Mr. Nordin Asidik Mangkunagara. Mr. Nordin Asidik Mangkunagara, please. You're welcome. Come to the stage. Thank okay, you. thank you, Pro, uh, Mr. Amripan. You may go to the stage. Sorry, the name is Sidik. Nordin Sidik. Sidik, okay. Mr. Sidik, come to the stage. But well, uh, before the preparing the presentation, let me introduce Mr. Amripan. Is it okay? Because I only have your curriculum vitae, not Sidik curriculum vitae. Okay, Ms. Amripan Mohoni, PhD, is Associate Professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Universitas Sriwijaya. He finished study in master degree in uh, Mechanical Engineering, Technici Hall School, Darmstadt, Germany, and got his PhD in degree in University Technology, Malaysia. He has published some paper in Applied Mechanics and Material International Journal on Advanced Science, Engineering and Information Technology, Journal Technology, and some else. Indonesia is one of the country that have facing pandemic COVID-19 since the second quarter of 2020. As we know, the condition affect the people to conduct their activities from home, including the learning activity. Therefore, the readiness of education institution to carry out online course as necessity. Um, Mr. Amripan and his team also his uh, son have, has been developed the infrastructure of existing model-based learning management system in Universitas Sriwijaya. The development LMS can cover the need of learning process in Universitas Sriwijaya. The development of LMS is equipped by web conference Big Blue Button to facilitate the video conference on online classes. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, let me, Mr. Sidik, to present his presentation. The time for 30 minutes for the presentation, Mr. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to present the paper in Sriwijaya International Conference on G2021. Uh, before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Nordina Siddiq Mangkunegara. Today, I will present to you our paper with title Agile Response of Pandemic COVID-19 in Universitas Sriwijaya by implementing the learning management systems combined with web conferencing bit blue button. So let's go to the presentation. Uh, in this presentation, I will divide into four sections. The first is introductions. The second is development methodology. The third is result and discussion. And the last one is conclusions. <coughs> Uh, for the introductions of this research, the problem starts from outbreaks of COVID-19 in Wuhan, China, that spread to the rest of the world, including Indonesia. For Indonesia community uh, facing the pandemic at the second quartile of 2020, and this affected in many many public sectors, including the changes the changes of learning method, especially in higher education. 
So we face the reality that the teaching and learning processes must be conducted in online. To, so the needs of online learning management systems must be provided. So, uh, but there is still a problem with using online learning management system where the system is still an unsynchronous system where the teaching and learning is doing by an, an asynchronous. So to make it a uh, asynchronous teaching and learning, we are propose an integration LMS with web conference for make the synchronous teaching and learning. For the development of method development methodology for this paper, we are using rapid prototype development method. It's starting from the initial requirements where we are gathering the initial requirements for develop the prototype of the systems. After we're gathering the initial requirements, we are creating the prototype of the systems and make an informal architecture documentations for the systems. After that, we are demonstrate the prototype to the customers to get the feedback from customer evaluations and this feedback will be, feedback will be determined to the new requirements of the systems will conduct in the next cycles. These cycles will be continuously repeated until the customer satisfied. For the result of this development of LMS and web conferencing, uh, we are using using a common use open applications for model for learning management system and web conferencing where for learning management system we are using model LMS where model is an open source applications for learning management systems that are using to carry out the learning and teaching by online for the web conferencing, we are using Big Blue Button, where Big Blue Button is an open source web conferencing and collaborative software for online learning that enables sharing audio, video, screen, presentation slides, whiteboard, and chat in real time. For the development of Universitas Sriwijaya, LMS, and web conferencing, uh, we are doing in five phases. In the first phase, uh, we are using we are using one dedicated server where all the process of the LMS systems is conduct in one ses in one server. In phase one, the limitations is up to 1,500 concurrent of user, concurrent user. Uh, seeing this, we in phase two, we are separate the applications and data server into two dedicated server, and the limitations increase up to 2,500 concurrent users. In phase two, we are founding that the data server have higher utilities that being used for the systems. So in phase three, the data server was upgraded using SSD and VME to get higher performance of the systems. And it show will the limitation of the concurrent users is up to 4,500 concurrent users. But 
the limitations of the system is tough is still far away from the needs of university thirty three thousand academic community that must be covered by the system so with these limitations for and the further improvement of the LMS we are proposed to use a clustering system in the LMS for the clustering system there are four new initial requirements for clustering system one is a load balancer where the load balancer is to is used to distribute the workload to the application server evenly and second database server ICID where the database server is used to admin and store the database of the LMS and the third one there are main server for sharing data this main server is used to sharing data and workload and the fourth one is case server for the case server is used for increasing the speed of main server through the case memory for the database icid icid is uh, atomicity consistency isolation and durability where is a set of a, a set of properties of database transactions intended to guarantee data validity despite errors power failures and other mishaps using the clustering system it shows by the architecture of the design systems by using five dedicated servers as one as a load balancer server two as a load lms application server one as database and one as data and case server the limitations of this design is up to 8,000 concurrent users. Uh, after we're still developing the design until now, uh, finally, and for this paper, finally we improve the architecture design using this following step. We separate the data and case server, and also in case server, we are separate the case into two server: one as a session user case and one for application case. And also, we are adding one uh, LMS application server, so the concurrent of user is increased up to fifteen thousand concurrent users in the final in the final of the risk of this research okay <clears throat> but uh, these systems is still have the limitations where the system is still an asynchronous uh, teaching and learning so to make it uh, synchronous teaching and learning we are adding a web conferencing for the systems this web conference this web conferencing systems using similar clustering systems like the LMS systems where this is using uh, this use for 14 dedicated server one as a load balancer server one as a case server, one as a database server, ten as a big blue button application server, and one as a turn server. Uh, for the case server, case server is uh, using to store the case data from big blue button applications and the database server is used to index the record from big blue button up
to the synchronous online teaching and learning by using LMS and web conferencing. So, in the conclusions of this research, the development of LMS and web conferencing systems at Universitas Sriwijaya provides convenience to the academic community of the Universitas Sriwijaya to carry out online teaching and learning processes. These systems offer the opportunity to conduct synchronous online classroom using big blue button video conferencing features and model LMS. Thus, the Universitas Sriwijaya becomes a campus that are ready to provide learning processes, whether face-to-face -face or online classroom. Okay, I think that's all from me. Thank you for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Mr. Sidik for informative and insightful talk. Thank you very much for the presentation about in development and infrastructure of the existing model-based learning management system in Uta Sriwijaya. You may want to take a break, but uh, sit here, please. <laughs> Because a minute, we are going to enter the discussion section. I would like to invite Prof. Kuat. Prof. Kuat, still there in Zoom meeting? Prof. Kuat, you would like to join back to the decision, having discussion with us. Please welcome Prof. Kuat, because in Zoom meeting there are so many uh, questions for you, Prof. Kuat. Okay, maybe uh, Prof. Kuat will come back to the, uh, the Zoom session um, and committee will contact him. Uh, because there are several questions on the chat room Zoom, and I will read, uh, read for the speaker. For those who want to directly deliver the comments question to the speaker, please click right hand button on the turn or turn on your microphone. Or if it is you in the uh, ballroom, you can just raise your hand and please kindly mention your name and the institution. Okay, another uh, question for Mr. Sidik or someone can contact Prof. Kuat because many uh, question in the chat room for Prof. For Prof. Kuat. Or in the bathroom, do you want to ask something to Mr. Sidik or Mr. Amrifan also? <laughs> Yeah, in the ballroom. Just raise your hand. Oh, okay. Well, can committee give the microphone to him, or he just go to in front of to the stage? Please ma kindly mention your name and your institution. Okay, after that, we still have question for Mr. Siddiq. Uh, the young millennials want to ask the young millennials too, right? Okay, good morning. My name is Alfarisi from Sriwijaya University. Uh, My question is for Mr. Fuad. Uh, my question is about Genos. We are sorry because Prof. Fuad still not in Zoom meeting. Uh, oh. We kindly invite for the question for Mr. Sidik first. Or some, oh. the committee will contact the Prof. Fuad. <laughs> Do you have a question for Mr. Sidik? Uh, want to want to know him closely? <laughs> My friend have a question. Okay, your friend. Oh, the young ladies. Okay. 
Well, my name is Putra Madania from Universitas Sriwijaya. Then I, well, I want to ask that, as we know, e-learning and big blue button are one of innovation of education section during pandemic. Then, what is the future development of the programs education, of the programs e-learning and big blue buttons for post-pandemic? That's all. Okay. Thank you, Miss Putri. Do you want to answer directly? Or you want to say <laughs> to your father? <laughs> okay, thank you uh, for the question. Maybe this is uh, a question about the future of the LMS and Big Blue Button system in Universitas Sriwijaya. This uh, decision in uh, Universitas Sriwijaya is to to implement the learning e-learning system forward even the pandemic is over and min minimal is 50% of the teaching and learning process in Sriwijaya University will be conducted through this e-learning system. It's been in the future we will uh, we will work together to use this uh, e-learning system, and maybe in the next time or in the next uh, near future we got another supporting server and another video conference this program by the director of University Sriwijaya to create the US KMZ he called like that US KMZ it means this is University Sriwijaya Kem Zoom we made uh, hopefully, in the next uh, three months or four months, we got a Zoom meeting for uh, all of us in Universitas Sriwijaya as the as the concurrent for the Zoom legal, yeah, because uh, the director of Sri Universitas Sriwijaya will we have our original Zoom meeting. This is for the response of the so many lecturer, uh, student also have the difficulty to work with this uh, e-learning system because they are not familiar with the big blue button for Alan. Yeah, that's, that's all. Maybe this uh, answer uh, the question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arban. Uh, good news, yeah. Good news for all of us in the online uh, classes. And another uh, question for Mr. Sidik and Mr. Amrifan. No, no more question. Okay, we still waiting for uh, invite uh, Prof Kuat because so many uh, question in the room chat in the ballroom want to ask Miss uh, Prof Kuat if still connected with him. you if you want to ask something about uh, Mr. Siddiq presentation about learning management system we kindly invited to drop the question in the chat room zoom ok 
Okay, we are really sorry if we cannot contact to Prof. Kuat. I'm, I'm here now. Ah. Online ah. now. <laughs> sorry. Hello, Prof. <laughs> we have uh, many questions, Prof, for you. Okay, uh, thank you to you to in uh, chat room zoom because it's already uh, in the past uh, the first is from Tegar Ananda Putra uh, he asks about does the sensor array could classify the COVID variant too if it couldn't have you uh, ever try to take the step further to make the kind of sensor to do that job thank you wassalamualaikum yeah, uh, thank you for a very interesting question. <clears throat> it is very important for us. Uh, actually, we still use the, the same sensors, but uh, to detect another variants of virus, and for example, the Delta virus and another uh, variant of virus, it, it, you just train again this uh, electronic nose, your genus, to the uh, confirmed uh, patient with the Delta uh, infected virus, for example. So the focus here is not on the sensor, but on the artificial intelligence. So just add the data training uh, of the artificial intelligence, then you can detect the new ones of this uh, uh, virus. So this is uh, our answer, I think. It's clear. Yeah, still develop, yeah, Prof. Yeah. Okay, and then from Nurul from Energy Laboratory Unsri. Uh, um, okay, the question is from Kuat Triana. Many people doubting uh, on the currency of the existing COVID-19 virus detection equipment. In your opinion, technically and scientifically, how to explain to the common people properly? And uh, the next question, apart from how it works, what are the key difference between Genos 9, uh, 19 and those are the new widely used PCR, antigen, and others? You may uh, okay. answer the question. Probably. Yeah, first I want to answer the second question. Uh, uh, genus, uh, PCR detect the particle virus directly because we have uh, swab uh, samples then it uh, detected by using the real-time PCR, then you can detect the uh, DNA or RNA of the virus. So you can detect directly the virus. The problem is uh, when the swap is, uh, is not correct, it means that you just uh, put your swap uh, sample just uh, about, uh, or you cannot, uh, catch the virus uh, on your swab sample, that will be uh, a false negative for the PCRs. This is the problems also. So PCR is not on, uh, on the, uh, uh, always 100% of the accuracy. It depends on your preparation and your uh, swab uh, 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 methods and techniques. So, okay. Uh, so, PCR detect directly the virus, but uh, electronic or so genus C19 is not detect directly the virus. It detect about the activity, uh, uh, the activity result of virus to the uh, tissue of our body, especially in the lungs, uh, uh, cell. Uh, there is a reaction between the virus and uh, our lung uh, cell, then it resulted in uh, specific or uh, yeah, specific uh, compound, volatile uh, compound. It is not detect directly the virus, but it is detect the result of the activity of the virus in our body. This is the uh, focus on electronic nose or uh, Gino C19. Okay, this is very very different. And the one and the the first question can can you repeat again? I don't remember. Actually. Uh, she asks, uh, in, your in your opinion, technically and scientifically, how to explain to the common people who adapting about accuracy of existing COVID-19? To adapting? What, what, sorry? About to adapt to existing COVID-19. Uh, uh, it is related to the instrument or, or it is related to the 
uh, our behavior to adapting uh, the COVID-19. Yeah. It is not yeah. clear for me. Yes, because the scientifically already existing, right? Because the only about the behavior of the people, Prof. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is depend depend on the behavior of the people how to protect ourselves. After vaccine, I think it will be better compared before the vaccine. So the ability, or the immunity of our body is uh, better. So the touch of the virus can be uh, uh, can be uh, overcome by our our uh, body. I think this is no problem. <laughs> The oh, this one is a uh, top on the accuracy of the equipment. Yeah, all the equipment actually is not the perfect ones. Yeah, including the uh, PCR, including also the rapid test of antigen. Rapid test of antigen is about uh, the, uh, uh, high sensitivity but low selectivity. Uh, sorry, high sensitivity but low specificity. It means if the positive uh, detected by the rapid test of antigen, it means it is a true positive. But as negative, it does not mean that it is really the, the negative one. Why? Because uh, uh, many factors, why the negative one of the uh, detection using uh, antigen uh, rapid detection is not guaranteed to be a true negative. This, this is our problem, uh, including for PCR. PCR is also similar. When the positive, I think this is a real positive, when, but uh, and the negative is not uh, uh, really negative. Uh, this, this condition is similar to uh, uh, GNC19, it is similar. But uh, you must remember that uh, it, is, it is typical in our, our country, in Indonesia, to uh, commercialize to our product of innovation to be the society. Uh, a lot of uh, factors, uh, including the, the political uh, uh, the political factor and also the economical factors. Uh, There's a lot of pro pro problem in Indonesia, so uh, it is not easy to uh, deliver our product in a society to be sustainable in the long term, in long time. Uh, but uh, we have to be, yeah, uh, continue our our uh, research to be improved and improved any many times. I think this is not uh, not not problem. So uh, I just focus on the no perfects of all the uh, detection uh, uh, system, even using the PCR or uh, another techniques. Okay, related to the question, Ms. Nuro still asked about what is the most science, uh, significant thing that affect the accuracy of Genus uh, 19? Yeah. And how do you, the research, develop further study to research to address people doubt about the accuracy of the equipment? Uh, yeah, thank you. This is a, a very important uh, question also. Uh, uh, recently, we understand that the environment is very uh, important parameter that influence the accuracy of the system. That's why sometimes when we apply, uh, when not not me, but the government applying the genus in a train station, for example, it will be uh, not suitable. I think why because uh, we use uh, we must. Uh, uh, make a uh, environment conditions as uh, like when we train the condition of the uh, profiling test. This is our problem. And also in the um, rapid transport, uh, public transport, I mean, it is also it's not so difficult way because uh, some uh, passengers uh, need to go faster. So. Uh, it is not possible to uh, test by using genus properly. Why? Uh, even uh, because we have to uh, clean in the uh, center uh, chambers before uh, continuing with another passengers. So if you don't clean 
the sensor, sensor chamber with the previous passenger, it will be uh, contamination to another uh, patient. Yeah, I think it is the problem. That's why right now Chinos is uh, comfortable to be used in a hospital and uh, factory and some uh, school, uh, university, and also Pondok Pesantren. This is uh, very uh, suitable rather compared to another public transportation. So that's why we want, uh, we will produce the next uh, uh, 2000 units in the next uh, months, maybe. I think that's all. Okay, so, yeah. uh, there is many uh, question for you, but we move to another speaker first. Uh, there is a question for Mr. Siddiq. If a pandemic is over and students start studying in the class directly, I would like to know. To the online learning, especially of the online learning in the higher education does online learning would still really fun to be used thank you okay thank you for the questions uh, in my opinion uh, online learning it's still be used for the for, for the for the future because uh, we are in the era where all the work, all the study, we can do it by online and by remote. So it's cannot be just in the classroom. You have to study about the study about the lectures or something, but you can also do the studies by online using the technology such as LMS or anything. I think that's my answer. Okay, thank you, Mr. Siddiq. Uh, Prof Kuat, uh, is there a question for you? Are you still there? Yes, still there. Uh, Prof, uh, from Mr. Irfan Zaki, how about the safety feature of the genus device when the sample is taken from the positive patient? Uh, patient? Mm. As we know, there are several research said that COVID-19 can be infected through the air, while the air sample will be in the chamber and flow out in the environment. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that's why we use the HEPA filter to protect uh, the virus to be uh, contaminate to contaminate the uh, air. That's why we trap the virus on the uh, uh, filters uh, properly. Then I I think I have uh, show the audience uh, when I I presented my my presentations. This is no, it's okay. Uh, no 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 detection in, in our, our environment due to the contamination of, uh, uh, of contamination by the positive uh, COVID-19 uh, patients. It's okay. And uh, the doctor is also recommended. It is not a problem, no, no problem. Okay, bro. Uh, actually, there is a question from the ballroom. May I invite for you, Prof? Okay, please. Okay, Mr. Alfarisi, if I'm not mistaken, you want to ask to Prof what? Okay, thank you. Uh, let me introduce myself again. My name is Alfarisi from Sriwijaya University. I want to ask about uh, Genos. As we know, Genos in air main, have used in many, many situations, like in an airport. And as you say before, there is a neg negativity on all the COVID-19 tests. I mean like there is a PCR swab test and there is a something different between all of that. And as we know, as other ordinary people, I read in the newspaper on something. Uh, many, many like uh, ED 
uh, kita dokter Indonesia have question about the accuracy the accuracy about Ginos what do you think about that as a powder or something like in Ginos thank you okay this is also a very interesting question and uh, many people ask me about this question uh, yeah it depends on on our situation uh, i mean that uh, as i i mentioned before that the condition of environment is very very important and many people don't care about this just put the machine in any place and then use the the the, the machine to be for detecting uh, covid-19 It is the, our problem in society. Uh, actually, some instrument uh, like a diagnostic instrument of a medical application is also must be uh, 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 located in the or must be uh, performed in the, the very specific condition, uh, including the stability of the electrical and the stability of the environment and so on. But uh, the problem in our society is not all people use the Genus 19 in the proper uh, uh, condition. Uh, this is uh, our problem. That's why uh, some cases in some uh, place uh, is reported to be uh, not, uh, well, not accurate of the Genus. Yes, because the condition is not proper. Why? Because the sensor response depend on the environment that's why right now we are developing the system to maintain the condition of the environment to be uh, uh, like uh, what we call the climatic chambers this is uh, the chamber small chamber to recondition of the environment condition to be the uh, proper condition of the genus 19. It's still in development. Yeah, this is our problem. And uh, it is also a problem that you know that right now I, I read from the uh, uh, reference that in Indonesia there are about 100 uh, uh, branch of uh, what you call uh, rapid test antigen, but we don't know about the re, uh, the test result of this uh, this uh, antigen in the field. I don't know. This is our problem. Also, not not only in the in the society of Indonesia, but also in our government, also uh, our situation in the university and so on. Yeah, this is uh, my answer. Sir. No problem, but. But right now we're still doing a research about the genus, but for application not only for COVID-19, but also for tuberculosis and also ulcus diabeticum. You know that uh, there's a problem in ulcus diabeticum. This is uh, ulcus and for uh, diabetic uh, people. So amputation will be the final decision if we don't know the specific uh, bacteria uh, infected Uh, on the uh, olipus. This is our problem. So we reutilize our uh, genus 19 not only for uh, COVID detection, but another uh, disease. No problem. Okay, thank you, Prof. Kuat. How about Mr. Alvarisi? It's done for the question. So uh, as you said, as you said, the genus, the genus uh, system is not used properly in Indonesia. Or what? Sorry, not clear. Uh, Can be louder. So, uh, so, the, so the genus, the genesis. I, I, I said like the gen didn't use properly. Yeah. I mean, is is that what you mean? Properly in maybe in airport or something like that. I think so. I think so because it's not easy to recondition of uh, the uh, environment and uh, especially in uh, uh, train station. This is very crowded and there's very pollutions and so on. So we have to uh, maintain the condition 
with the new uh, uh, system, uh, we still in developing one, but uh, uh, it will be inshallah will be delivered next next year, the end of uh, the early of this next year, we will uh, uh, launch the system for recondition of uh, the environment to be the proper uh, condition for uh, Chinos C19 detections. Thank you. Thank you for the Welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Aparizi, and thank you very much, Prof. Kuat. Uh, we still waiting for the question, yeah, uh, in the chat room, Zoom, or do you want to just raise your hand in the room, uh, chat room, but uh, chat room, Zoom, uh, about the learning management system, and also for Prof. Kuat, uh, if you want to sharing maybe if you are a lecturer uh, student want to ask mr Siddiq and also mr amriwan or prof kuat while waiting for the question coming up uh, prof uh, kuat there is a question again for you from mr bakti yudo uh, actually mr bakti yudo in here but uh, the, uh, he sent me the question prof you use the aa should you must training the data how many data that you collect to make the high accuracy, Prof. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the interesting equations. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, a lot of data will be better, but uh, in some condition, the limited data is also possible. And we are now developing an active learning system. I mean that you can increase the number of data for training uh, time by time, not, uh, not only for uh, the part, uh, a lot of data in uh, one time, but you can, uh, uh, what do you call it? You can uh, train the AI with the small data uh, and continue with the, the next data and so on. This is the, uh, we call the active learning system. Uh, uh, compared to the previous one, before, uh, when we are uh, working with uh, uh, profiling test and that I presented in this uh, uh, conference, the, the system is still not active learning, but right now we develop the active learning system. So if, if you, for example, apply the genus in the new situation, then you can uh, tap first, you can check the situation and then you train again in the system and very fast. Uh, it's uh, take about one or two minutes and then you can use with the new uh, system. This is the active learning system. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, how about the Mr. Bak Yudo? May good the conclusion of the question. Uh, next, Prof. There is a question from George Purta Salomo Sibarani. Hello, Professor. I have a question about genus C19, many people in Indonesia is a smoker. If the yeah. device is used with a smoker, is it the result have the same accuracy as the people who doesn't smoke? Why? Yeah. The question. Yeah. Uh, we try to uh, make a training of the genus to uh, using the sample of the smokers people. But uh, right now, uh, if, if the smokers stop uh, one hour before testing, it's still okay, no problem. Including not only uh, smokers, but also another disease like uh, pneumonia and lung cancer is very different from the COVID-19, totally different. So it will be uh, no problem with the uh, smoke uh, detection. But if you just smoke, for example, three minutes or five minutes uh, before testing, and you and then you check uh, with the genus C19, it will be a problem. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure it will be positive or negative, but it will be a random uh, situation. Okay, thank you, Prof. Kuat. Uh, nah. There is a question for Mr. Sidik, but indirect message. Oh, okay, I will. 
So to you, Mr. Sidik morning, Ms. Bazina. I, my name is Faki from Unas Sriwijaya. I have a question to Mr. Sidik. Why Mr. Sidik and team prefer to choose Big Blue Button as a e-learning for Unsri above the e-learning system that available? What is the special benefit about Big Blue Button? You may answer, Mr. Sidik. Okay. <coughs> Thank you for the questions. Maybe I will answer the questions. Is because Big Blue Button is one of uh, open source applications, so we can uh, cut the production's cost by using the open source applications. And Big Blue Button is also one of the web conferencing applications that most common use in Europe and and America, so that we are using a big blue button, it's because one for because of open source applications and it's a common use applications for web conferencing. Still developing, yeah, because yeah. many, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's many. Okay, thank you, Mister. Uh, did Mister. Everyone want to add the uh, the answer? Okay, I add some uh, information to the answer from Mr. Sidik. At the beginning of development of the learning management system, the big blue button, this is the instruction from the rector that we must have the knowledge, not just uh, subscribe or use, we have uh, enough Man, uh, man power or the expert in this uh, field. That's why the rector of Universitas Sriwijaya prefer that we choose the open source. With the open source, we have uh, opportunity to customize, customize according to our needs. This is the main uh, reason to choose the big blue button. But the uh, disadvantage is uh, some lecturer or some student have not so familiar with this uh, application. And as we know that if the open source is must be some customized uh, must be some customized uh, the facility features of this uh, application. This is, but when when we just uh, buying or subscribe like Zoom, the cost is too high. Yeah, for the student body of three. 33,000 student body in Universitas Sriwijaya when we multiply with uh, some dollar, not rupiah, then we cannot decide. We must provide the whole members of Sriwijaya Academic Universitas Sriwijaya to have this account and we, it will be the huge cost of Universitas Sriwijaya and we choose the open source and learning is our part uh, part of life in university that's why the choose of this uh, big blue button is more the compromise between the budget and the uh, knowledge in, in Sriwijaya Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Avan. Because the open source has advantages and it disadvantages also, right? And then, um, Prof. Kuat, there is a, a question again for you, Prof. Kuat. Hello, Prof. Okay. Kuat. Yeah. From Mahdi from the Chemical Engineering University of Sriwijaya. What I'd like to love to ask you if 
we we all know there is were so many pandemic before COVID-19 and there are will also many vaccine has been made for those pandemic illness. Why should we trust the coronavirus vaccine when it was developed so fast? Thank you. Wow. Ah. <laughs> yeah, this is our my question also to our government and also for uh, our Indonesian people. Why development of vaccine in Indonesia is very slow, but the development of vaccine in another country is very fast. This is similar to our genus C19. Yeah, the, the uh, what we call the regulation of uh, our country is still a problem, I think. So, well, this is a big problem in, in our, our country. I think. This is a, the, the question is the same for me. <laughs> so I don't want to answer your question, but we still have the same uh, question. Why uh, uh, development or innovation uh, product in Indonesia is very slow, but in another country is very fast. It is uh, related to the regulation of uh, our government, our country. I think. Yeah, many various <laughs> Meta, the Delta, the so on, so on, P1, P2, and so on. And then we inviting again if any question from the bar room to Prof. Kuat or to Mr. Siddiq and Mr. Amrifan. Any question? No question. There is a last question maybe, Prof. Kuat. Uh, from Penny, Fanny in the Zoom meeting, we are very proud that Prof. Kuat and UGM researcher have succeed in developing Genesis uh, 19 Congratulations, greeting from me and friends in Palembang. As far as we know, the new wave and variant of the SARS CoV-2 virus will continue to exist and arrive. Is genus 19 still tangible and enough to defect, uh, detect? Sorry, to detect and effective for its screening function. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, uh, your question and also. Your thought for, for, for us that uh, this is difficult, actually difficult to develop the, uh, to commercialize the uh, innovation products of our, uh, in our country. But uh, uh, don't worry about this one. <laughs> we, we should start with a small uh, act, but we, we start with the uh, uh, trying to deliver our uh, uh, products of innovation to the society. Even the first uh, step is still a lot of problem, but uh, in the next time we should uh, improve and improve, then we will have a uh, better uh, performance. And you can learn from the Elon Musk uh, strategy, I think. It is very, very popular. The first time uh, he released a lot of uh, car, as it, uh, electric car with a uh, uh, lot of problem, but uh, in, in the very short time, the innovation then grew uh, uh, rapidly, uh, very rapid. Uh, with, for example, Toyota need about 70 years to be uh, the same uh, innovation uh, stage, but uh, Elon Musk just need about Three years. So this is very, very different uh, approach of the innovation uh, to be commercialized in a society. And uh, a question is about uh, uh, about the possibility where what the possibility of genus to be detect uh, for detecting and the new uh, variant of the virus. I think depend on uh, your. Uh, training of the system. If you train again the genus, the AI of the genus with the new uh, variant of the virus, it will be possible to be detected. But uh, if you uh, don't uh, update the, uh, uh, I mean, the, but actually not not all people to, to uh, uh, train the, the system, but we in uh, uh, in Yogyakarta and the center of genus can uh, develop uh, the update system 
So the active system is also important. Uh, and if you connect to the internet, uh, when you use the Genos uh, C19, there will be announcements of the report that you should uh, update the system and so on. So that's okay, no problem. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Kuat. Uh, I think uh, that's all about the, this session, the keynote speaker session today. May I conclude that the Prof. Kuat and team uh, development about the Genus 19 uh, and also the development of Big Blue Button or the learning management system also to use in the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, because the COVID-19 pandemic is still uh, you is still coming up uh, and then the, we have the appropriate green treatment for that. Thank you very much, Prof. Kua. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you very much, all of uh, participants and our organizing committee. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, finally we arrive at the end of the plenary session. You may want to go back, Prof. Uh, Mr. Sidik. Is it okay? I uh, think you are so nervous beside me. <laughs> okay, on behalf of Cicetok Committee and Faculty of Engineering, we thank very much of Prof. Kuat and also Mr. Amripan and Mr. Sidik for joining with us today. Thank you very much for putting time in the, your busy schedule to share with us in Cicetok 2021. We do really appreciate it. I'd like to say thank you to all the participants who still join this session and to all they have been participate in this session. Please stay for incoming interesting session ahead. I am Baslina Domi Afra for moderator today's discussion. Apologize if there are uh, subcoming and guiding uh, in this event. Thank you very much. Back to Master of Ceremony. from Professor Quatriana and Mr. Arifin that represented by Mr. Nurdin. After hearing the material delivered by today's speaker, the next session is lunch and prayer break time. This break is scheduled until half past one. For virtual audiences, please remain in the room and always pay attention to the comments direction. Respectful audiences, it's been a health day of Siceto Day 2. The next agenda is parallelization of Siceto 2021. Please get into your room that has been announced before and this agenda will be guided by the comments. And after the parallelizations, for the online participants, please get back into this Zoom channel and for all the participants here, please get back into this ballroom to continue our agenda which are awarding stations and closing ceremony. Thank you. <laughs>